COVID. This that you see up here, written here, will be on the, well, may be on your test, but it is on a final exam. And I spent some time looking for a certain word, and I didn't realize this is no longer in a book. I talked about wergale, ordeal, but compurgation. Now, wergale was the pain of fine, ordeal was going through painful experience. Compurgation, and this is not in the book, but, it, but it's something I'm going to mention now. It's where people swear an oath. But when you get people to swear an oath that you're innocent. Um, Compurgation. Compurgation, yeah, but the swearing of oaths. Now, in other words, if you get enough people to swear an oath that you didn't commit the crime, you could get exonerated or get off. Now, of course, there's a story of a man who went before a judge, and the judge says, you're guilty. We have two reliable witnesses who saw you do it. And the accused person says, well, your honor, give me some time, and I'll produce a hundred reliable witnesses who didn't see me do it. As if that would have exonerated him. Anyway. Um, but if you get people um, to swear oaths that you're innocent, you could get off. Again, I did not realize until I got out, with, until the class was over. I knew there were three of them. And they do appear on one of the finals that I've made up. And it didn't, I know it one time appeared in the book. All right. Now, Europe's peaceful time was interrupted by invasions from three sources. There have been time after time, folks, when people from Mongolia have marched the long, long distance all the way across the steeps of, uh, and come into Europe. One of the last of these was the Magyars. The Magyars came in around the year 1000, and they began to plague Eastern Europe and wreak havoc in places today like Hungary and Austria. Then the Muslims came up from Africa. I've mentioned how they took over Spain and were threatening to take over. Well, they tried to take over the Byzantine Empire here. And they were going to hit Europe from two sides. Actually, for a while, they took over Sicily. They were going to hit Europe from three sides. Spain, Sicily, and what is today Turkey. Eventually, they were driven out of Spain. Eventually, they were driven out of Sicily and eventually driven out of Greece and Bulgaria and Serbia. But they weren't driven out, their, their presence is still there. But they no longer in power. They never were, they said they are still part of Turkey, but supposing that the Muslims living in Turkey have somewhat modernized. And I say supposedly, it's hard to tell sometimes, but they've somewhat modernized. But Europe was threatened, but then a big threat also came from the north. A group of people, the Vikings, swooped down. We don't know for sure what caused the Vikings to move, but it might have been Christian missionaries were sent up here to convert them to Christianity. And the Christian missionaries might have agitated these people. But anyway, they swept down in from Europe. They conquered parts of England. And they went down here even as far as Italy and set up a kingdom in Italy the, the called Norm, the, the kingdom of the Normans, the Northmen. They set up a kingdom in France called Normandy. And Normandy was to make news many generations later when uh, the Americans landed on Normandy Beach. But the word Normandy comes the word Northmen. The Vikings came from what is today Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. These four areas here in what is sometimes called Scandinavia. I'll insert this. If you think that the word Scandinavia sounds like the word scandal, you are right, because oftentimes the conduct of the Scandinavians has been looked on as being scandalous by the rest of the people of Europe. And Sweden is one of the more liberal countries in the world, even to this day, liberal in its moral attitudes. But uh, they, would some, they were sometimes considered scandalous. Norway Sweden. Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. Now, I'm going to insert this, and to my surprise, your book does not mention it, at least not here. It is known that a Viking colony came to what is today Canada, and Viking artifacts have been found as far away as Minnesota, as far west. But the Vikings went to Iceland, went from Iceland to Greenland, and from Greenland to Nova Scotia, 
And in Nova Scotia, they were driven out by the Indians. This was like Europeans' first encounter with the Indians. Round one went to the Indians owing to the superior numbers. And it was to be 500 years before another group of Europeans came over. And this time, the round did not go to the Indians, owing to the fact that Europeans had superior technology and the Indians had greatly depopulated. Now, it is now known, in one of your history, American history books that this school was taught from, it's now widely believed that a lot of European fishermen and traders frequently crossed the Atlantic and sometimes met with and traded the American Indians, but we don't have really good, clear records of it. The Viking sagas were not believed for a long time, but then they finally were. Anyway, um, the Viking colonies in the New World died out when a cold wave hit. And uh, the cold wave was responsible for the Black Death in Europe, a big depopulation, a big plague in China also, and they have wiped out a large part of the Indian population. Um, Uh, speaking of cold, some history books will say the Vikings named the island of Greenland, Greenland, because they said, let's try to get people to come here, but actually it was a frozen place. Personally, I think they named it Greenland because it was a grassy green land, and they could farm in Greenland the same way they farmed in Norway and Sweden. Then came the big climate change, the big freezes of the early 1300s. And the Vikings refused to learn from the Eskimos. They thought of the Eskimos as being demons, scravings, they call them. And the Eskimos, it's known, were willing to help them and could have helped them because the Eskimos knew how to survive in that kind of freezing weather. So while the Eskimos were having a great time, hey, this snow and ice is all that great, the Viking farmers starved to death because all their cattle and livestock starved and none of their crops would grow. And it was 200 years before any help came from uh, Norway and Sweden. By the time a ship arrived 200 years later, the colony was dead. The last ones that I were, uh, were still in their beds where they'd been for 200 years. Nothing but skeletal remains in their beds. Nobody around the area. The Eskimos left them alone. Anyway, the Vikings were the first Europeans to settle in what is today the New World. Your book shows some Viking ships. We did find one Viking ship, and the, the picture of it is on page 333. Remarkably well preserved and uh, held together by various props. There's a woodcut painting, or a yeah, painting on the same page adjacent showing Viking ships coming in. The Viking ships were pointed on both ends, which meant they could go up a river and then go back down the river without turning around. So they could go into a small area, but they spread terror to the Europeans wherever they went. They'd come to a town, raid the town, and then leave before the king could get his army together. Come to a town, raid the town, and leave. And this was to go on for a couple hundred years. And it became a prayer that was in a European's prayer book, from the fury of the north men, O Lord, deliver us. And this prayer book was still found in, I mean, this prayer was found in some of the prayer books as late as the year 1800. The Vikings oftentimes put dragons, dragon heads, both on the front and the back of their ships, or serpent heads. And uh, these serpent heads were designed to spread terror to the Europeans also. Now, some people believe that these dragon heads were useful in keeping sea monsters away. The Vikings believed in a great sea serpent and at the end of time, on the day of Ragnarok, on the day of doom, their god Thor was to finally kill. If any of you ever read the Norse legends, the Norse legends, and Thor has been the subject of many a movie here of late, some of which I've happened to see. Thor and his brother Loki and their father Odin and the goddess Frigga. Uh, in fact, a lot of the days of the week are named after Viking names. Wednesday, named after Odin, Viking god, the leader of the gods. Thursday, you guessed it, named after Thor, the god with the big hammer, the god of thunder. The hammer would always return to him. 
Friday, named after Frigga, their goddess of beauty, uh, fertility, sex. Um, three days in a row. Oh yeah, Tuesday, four days. Tuesday, Tuesday, named after Tur, the god of bravery. Tur was the one who, when the wolf, the fiendish wolf, said, "Well, if one of you will give me a hand, I'll let you test my test my strength." So Tur offered his hand, and the hand was bitten off by the fiendish wolf. So Tur is depicted as having his right hand missing. Tuesday was named after him. So four days in a row were named after Viking gods. You get some idea how much influence they still hold on us to this day. And in fact, Adolf Hitler wanted Europe to return to the worship of these gods, but he was unable to carry it out. All right. Europe's kings, such as they were, were unable to deal with the threats of the Vikings, the Muslims, and the Magyars coming in at once. In fact, it's a wonder Europe was not swallowed up. However, to make a long story short, somehow or another, these people coming from Mongolia would wind up converting to the religion of the places where they settled. So the Magyars converted to Christianity. And yes, the Vikings also converted to Christianity. In the case of the Muslims, they never did, happen to this day. And furthermore, the wars between Muslim and other people outside still goes on. Um, we will have more to say about the wars later when it comes to part on the Crusades. Well, as Europe fragmented, the system that developed was the feudal system. In effect, no one planned it in advance. So it was not like it was written in the Constitution. <laughs> but what would happen was a man would realize, hey, I can't defend myself from all the bands of outlaws. In other words, there's no partly any law. All the outlaw bands and all the um, invaders coming in, the Moors coming in here to steal, and the Magyars coming to steal, the People, the Moors, the, the Muslims, sisters, and steal. And so what he would do, he'd go to a richer neighbor, a powerful neighbor who lived nearby, and say, hey, let's band together. I will fight your battles for you. I'll help you fight your battles. But I can't fight our enemies by myself. So they would um, swear oaths to each other. An oath is called an oath of fealty. And um, this led to a system of vassalage. In other words, you had the powerful Lord, and under the Lord was a vassal. The vassals would swear oaths called oaths of fealty. In other words, I will be your vassal, I will help you, and oftentimes they would kneel down in front of the Lord and put their hand between the Lord. The Lord would hold his hand out like this, and they put their hands between the Lord's hand. And uh, they would, the, the vast would swear an oath of fealty. And then in turn, the Lord would swear, swear an oath of loyalty to his vassals. In other words, I will protect you and I will help you fight your battles. And uh, this was to lead to the feudal system that gradually evolved. Again, it was not planned in advance. But... Um, <coughs> But it was part of the system that uh, operated during the Middle Ages. Um, powerful nobles began became the power of, the, of Europe, and they brought some order to Europe. They were the ones who go out and try to capture with some success the outlaw bands. They would get together and lead armies and uh, tended to keep the the. Uh, Northmen in check and the Moors down here in check. And uh, they helped bring some order to Europe. The problem was there was no strong central government throughout most of Europe. That was to come later. 